The ranch is uh, approximately 7,000 acres in size. It's a cow-calf operation, and we raise and sell grass-fed beef that I deliver throughout the state. Right now, we have around 137 head. We have run as high as uh, 210. We've reduced our numbers due to uh, several dry years. And been practicing holistic ranch management, regenerative grazing, short duration grazing, whatever you want to call it, since we came here. When we bought the ranch in 2003, there was a lot of juniper tree invasion, mesquite invasion, choya cactus invasion, and we began eradicating the mesquite and the choya and the juniper trees. This was naturally a grassland, and so one of our goals is to bring it back to a grassland. Over the years, the juniper has invaded into the lower land due to the lack of fire. So you have lack of fire, but then you also have overgrazing, which, which grazed the grass down, which took away the fine fuels that would carry a fire. And so we have the infestation of the juniper that, that we see now in places where I have not eradicated it. So it's an ongoing process. So we basically started from scratch. And we have put in a lot of sweat equity and uh, sore muscles, you know, digging post holes, building fences, putting in waters to get it to where it is today. And then, of course, with Tom's um, extensive experience in, in the grazing management, uh, there's, this ranch has totally flourished from what it was. The uh, wells are weak and they pump off. So it's difficult to water very many cattle just from the wells alone. A lot of folks will haul water to their cattle. And of course, when you do that, well, cattle drink a whole lot more water. So we were not gonna do that. We developed a water system. I laid pipelines from the wells to storage tanks with a solar booster. Then I can move the water anywhere on the ranch. So I've got six wells that are tied together. So we move water with the cattle. The water is not running off the ranch like it used to. And so our static water levels in our wells have increased oh, from six inches to three feet. In a state like New Mexico where water is very critical, we can put water back into the ground. We can put water back in the aquifer if we just do it. And Evaporation is pretty high here with, from wind and the high temperatures. We noticed that whenever cattle were not in a pasture, then the water in a trough would go down anywhere from a foot to 18 inches before cattle came back to that pasture again. We heard about these shade balls that were being sold by one of the uh, soil and water districts. And, and so we bought the shade balls, we bought enough of them for seven water tanks. That reduced evaporation tremendously. In conjunction with that, well, we put tops on our fiberglass storage tanks. And I calculated that we would save around 100,000 gallons of evaporation per year. That's a lot, but a lot of water. And it's really made it a lot easier uh, to manage the water with the cattle. The water situation was, was minimal. There was hardly any troughs that were leaking water faster than water came in. Same thing for the one storage tank that was here. It, it was a project ranch, it really was. Tom would be out and laying pipelines, trying to get the waters going first for the one herd rotation. The one herd rotation originated wanting to imitate what the wild herds of buffaloes did. They move on, constantly on the move, and there's a lot of hoof impact happening. They are disturbing the soil breaking up the capping so water can penetrate. They leave a lot of dung and then they are gone. And on the open prairie, they would come back maybe months or maybe even years later and do the same thing. And this stimulated growth. And that's essentially what we're trying to do here. As we developed the water, then I started dividing down the pastures so that we could also increase the number of pastures. When we first started, we just had five pastures down here below the cap and two on top. Down here below, that results in about a 20-day, 20 22-day grazing period, which is too long. Now we are at 30 pastures and our average grazing period is about five days. 
We've reduced the length of grazing time down, increased the rest period, and that's reflected on the response of our grass now. Now, each pasture is going to be different because of the size of the pasture and the quality of the pasture. So if we hadn't built the infrastructure and done the grazing planning, we would have had to reduce our numbers down a whole lot more. In fact, we were buying cattle during the drought. And by doing drought planning, I add value to the cattle, to the calves. Number one, we sell grass-fed beef, so that's adding a lot of value to those calves. Number two, if my drought planning shows that we have more than enough grass for the present number of cattle that we have, I could hold over extra calves that would normally be sold in the fall. I can hold them over until the spring and you have higher prices then. So that's really helped a lot. I think the, the direct marketing for the grass food beef fits in really well with the grazing management we're doing because we are creating a healthy ecosystem. We have such a variety of grasses here and forbs and healthy soils. And I think all of that contributes to the exceptional flavor of the meat. Plus, you know, we try to handle the cattle gently and create a, a low stress environment for them. And it allows us also to run a smaller number of cattle than we would have to if we've sold it the commercial way. When we get heard from Sand County that uh, we'd won, well, that was, that was quite a surprise, quite news there. But we were very surprised and pleased. I mean, it's a prestigious award and something we're very proud to be awarded. We are very, very honored. And in my opinion, it goes more for Tom. I'm glad to be his sidekick in this, but he's definitely the one that is getting the, the award, as it should be. Today we know a whole lot more, and I think you're obligated to take care of the land. <laughs>